Hi! Today I want to tell you about the longest street in Lviv called Horodotska and it's also the most diverse street in Lviv. In the past it was grey and gloomy but now it's getting a new life. The length is 8.5 kilometers. It starts behind the Opera Theater and it ends at the Loop Roads outside of the city. First, I want to tell you about Astoria Hotel, which is com it was commissioned by the Opera Theater originally. It was built in 1914. Uh, it was Astoria Hotel, then during Soviet rule it became Kyiv Hotel. Some of its area was for rent and there were shops at the bottom. Uh, and then later it was renovated during independent Ukraine and it became Astoria Hotel again. Uh, it has very friendly staff, amazing management, international community likes to meet there for internations before COVID. And they also have Astoria birthday celebration, really amazing, exciting event, but it's all, only by invitation. And so apparently they say it has the best steak in town. I'm not sure, never tried, but my Italian friend tells me that it has the best coffee. If you like, you can stay there. It has center to one side and also busy Horodotska street and busy local life on the other side. Then after that, next object, very interesting object is the prison. But in the past, it was a monastery of Bridgetine's religious order. Uh, it was built in 1614. It was closed down during the Austrian rule in 1786 it became jail historically it was a detention center of political prisoners and you can see the monument that co commemorate the death of political act activists now it's a pre-trial detention center and the lviv penitentiary institution Another interesting object is St. Anne Church. Originally it was a Catholic church. After World War it was train ticket sales office. Furniture store was there also. And now in the 1990s it became Greek Catholic Church. The in interior was completely destroyed. But new decorations, Ukrainian style decorations are now there. And I, I like it. I like this church. I like to go there. What's standing besides the church is the theater. What is its history? Well, it's called Les Ukrain Lviv Drama Theater. Today, there is a show from Germany with Low, and you can still see it for a few days. It has acting school and acting workshops. So the style of this building is modernized Middle Ages with elements of Gothic Romanesque architecture. It belonged to monks, this, this ground territory belonged to Catholic monks and later to St. Anne Church. Then there was a project, Catholic home was planned there for Catholic association. The purpose was charity and spreading Catholic ideas. Um, so they planned a club there, prayer place and proceedings would go to charity. So it was built. Uh, in 1911 it had large hall which when the power in the city shifted it was used as a movie theater then it became military theater according to the website of this theater what is military theater can you tell me but they say it is one of the largest and brightest military theaters in ukraine after world war ii the most amazing uh, actors were performing there dekhtyarova shcherbakov Kravchuk, Tuhai, uh, and other famous actors. And it was commissioned by Soviet Department Ministry of Defense. So you had red caviar in the cafeteria and these amazing actors. And they were performing uh, plays that were serving, uh, they were showing Soviet heroes and the purpose was to build Soviet ideals in the country. Since 2008, this is a Lviv theater that belongs to municipal uh, administration. 
That's the story. You can come and visit this theater. Right next to St. Anne Church, there is a school uh, that belonged to this church. It was, it was built in 1884. It's made of red brick. It's Romano-Gothic style. One, one uh, department was separately for boys and another was for girls. By the way, it's not terribly hot in Lviv. Yesterday was actually chilly. I thought I got a cold. Uh, today is okay, but we are expecting a heat wave. Behind the school is a former Jewish hospital after Ben Hulim. It has a Moorish motif, really, really, really interesting for us. This area, uh, this is uh, like a Jewish uh, area. The board of Jewish community of Lviv was located here. So you can just see how diverse the street is. There's the Catholic church, the Catholic school, the Jewish area. There's also behind the hospital, there is the cemetery, Jewish cemetery, which is unfortunately is abandoned in really bad shape. Um, also there's the, the jail and the center. Lastly, there's the former artillery barracks that were built from 1839 to 1841. It was built for Austrian army. During Soviet time, it was military base. There was also depot for the trams, but never used for that purpose. Uh, now the Ukraine wants to have a garrison guard here. There's also a monument, Listopadovo Hochino monument, which is Ukrainian uprising, which took place in 1918. Uh, by the Ukrainian nationalists because they wanted to have independent Ukraine. So this is the history. These are the buildings few hundred meters away from the opera theater, but there's more. But if you are in this area, you watch this architecture, you walked around and you had your guided tour. What else I can offer to you is Alliance Francaise, which is I'm standing here on Ohiyanka Street. They are becoming, since recently, they are becoming very popular. I went there for painting, I went there for wine tasting, and there's amazing art exhibition happening now. One of my favorites. And also nearby, there's a private courtyard, which uh, a man has renovated, and it's now open for tourists. You can, you're welcome to go inside and view. There's a nice little fountain with fishes, nice flowers. And this man, he's retired. Uh, he sits down with you, has tea, gives you cookies, and tells you about his life. He actually became very famous in Lviv. He's in the newspapers, he's on the radio, and we just applaud his initiative and his uh, eagerness to show the city to tourists. Uh, yes, I hope you like this video. Thank you, Mom, for filming. Please like it and subscribe to my channel. Bye.